Hi children, today's story is called Jolly Tour. You've got this story at home, it's a very old book this actually. You might have it at home, if you have you might want to go and get it and we'll go through it together. Bramwell Brown had been busy knitting all week. He started on Monday, knitted all Tuesday and by Wednesday the scarf he was making was just about long enough for a little bear. But Bramwell didn't stop. By Thursday, the scarf fitted Rabbit and Little Bear together, but still Bramwell kept knitting. On Friday, the scarf fitted Rabbit, Little Bear and Duck, but Bramwell didn't stop knitting until Saturday. And by then, the scarf was too long for anyone in the playroom. I suppose we could cut it up, said Little Bear. Then everyone would have a scarf. It would all come unknitted then, said Old Bear. Little Bear tried on the scarf once more. But he tripped over the end and landed upside down in Bramwell's lap. Why did you make it so long, he said. Because people kept interrupting me, said Bramwell, and I forgot to measure it. Never mind, said Old Bear. I'm sure it will come in useful sometime. As a skipping rope, perhaps, grumbled Duck. May we interrupt you just one more time, asked Rabbit. We want you to come and look at a box for us. We don't, want, we don't know what's inside. It might be something exciting. Like treasure, said Little Bear. Probably empty, muttered Duck. Rabbit led the toys to a tall box tied up with string. Bramwell walked all round it. It hasn't got a label, he said. I'll make a hole in it and look inside. With his knitting needle, Bramwell poked a tiny hole in the box. The box said, ouch. Can boxes talk, whispered Rabbit. Well, this one just did, said Little Bear. It wasn't the box, said Old Bear. It was a something that's inside. What a pity, said Little Bear. It can't be treasure then. Well, it might be something guarding the treasure, said Rabbit, hopefully. Go on, Bramwell. Open it, please. Bramwell studied the mysterious package. I think I ought to talk to it first and see if it's friendly. He crept over to the little hole. Hello. He called softly, are you a friend or foe? Hello, came a muffled reply. I think I must be a friend because I haven't heard of a foe. Unless a foe is better than a friend, in which case I'm one of those. It doesn't sound very sure, said Duck. I think we ought to be prepared anyway, said Rabbit. I'll find a net to catch it in, in case it suddenly jumps out. Duck fetched a rope to tie it up. It might escape from your net, he said. Little Bear found a bag to put the treasure in, just in case there was some. Very carefully, Bramwell and Old Bear untied the string and lifted the lid. They all held their breath. Two little furry horns appeared first, then two large furry ears, and then a great big friendly furry face. Oh, well, that's better, said the something, smiling down at the toys. Hello, everyone. What have you got there? Rabbit and Duck quickly dropped the net and the rope, but Little Bear clung hopefully to his bag. Excuse me, he said. Are you standing on some treasure? The big fairy head disappeared in the box and then popped out again. Sorry, it said. There's no treasure in here. What are you standing on then, asked Rabbit. Just the bottom of the box, he replied. Gosh, asked Little Bear, you must be Jolly Tall. That's right, said their new friend. I'm Jolly Tall, that's my name. But you can call me Jolly if you like. Do you like my house? Well, actually, said Little Bear, we thought it was a box. It would look better with windows and a door. Jolly agreed. So the toys set to work. Little, little Bear cut out the windows and doors. Bramwell fetched some material for the curtains and Rabbit fixed them in place with glue and pins. All the toys helped and were very pleased when at last the box looked like a real house. Little Bear went in to tell Jolly that it was ready. You can come out now, he said. I'm afraid I can't, said Jolly. I'm too tall for the front door. You could jump out, suggested Rabbit. Jolly jumped, but he couldn't get anywhere near high enough. Little Bear rushed out of the door very quickly. A jumping Jolly seemed much more dangerous than a still one. Fetch the crane, said Old Bear. We'll lift you out. Will that mean going up? asked Jolly nervously. Of course, said Old Bear. Up 
up and over the top of the box. But I don't like heights, said Jolly. My head seems to think it's high enough as it is. I know what to do, said Little Bear. I'll put my paws over your eyes, then you won't see how high you're going. Puffing and panting, the toys managed to lift the crane up on a pile of books to make it taller than Jolly. Little Bear tied the chain to a handkerchief around Jolly's middle, climbed up Jolly's neck and leaned over to cover his eyes with his paws. We're ready, he shouted, and Bramwell began to turn the handle of the crane. Very slowly, Jolly began to ride out of the box and soon the toys could see nearly all of his long neck. Feeling very excited, Bramwell wound the handle around faster and faster as more and more of Jolly appeared. We're up, cried Little Bear, taking one paw off Jolly's eye to wave to the others. Then it happened. Jolly saw how high up he was and began to wave his legs about like a windmill. The box wobbled, Jolly wobbled and both went crashing to the floor. Little Bear flew across the room and disappeared, but nobody noticed they were too busy pulling Jolly out of his box. The toys helped Jolly up and onto his feet again. But where's Little Bear? They asked, anxiously peering into the battered box. I'm here, came a little voice from across the room. I flew. There was Little Bear clinging to the playroom curtain by the tips of his paws. Help, he shouted. I can't get down. Hang on, said Jolly, galloping to the rescue. I think I can get you down. You can slide down my neck. Little Bear could hang on no longer. He let go of the curtain, shot all the way down Jolly's neck and fell plop to the neck that Bramwell held out for him. He enjoyed it so much that he wanted another go. So old Bear said it was time for bed. Where's Jolly going to sleep? asked Rabbit. I'll swap my bed for your house, Jolly, said Little Bear. You can have my house, said Jolly cheerfully. Giraffe sleeps standing up. Just a blanket will do for me. Rabbit and Little Bear found a nice cosy blanket for their new friend, but they couldn't get all of him under it. Your neck's going to get cold, sighed Little Bear. Bramwell looked at Jolly with his neck sticking out of the blanket. Just a moment, he cried, and he rushed off. A few minutes later, he returned with a carefully wrapped parcel. It's a present for Jolly, he said, a welcome present. Oh look, it was his scarf that he was knitting at the start of the story. Jolly unwrapped the parcel. Inside was the very, very long red scarf. It's lovely, he said. It's the best welcome present ever. But how did you know it? I needed it? We knew someone would, said Bramwell, and the and, and he wound the extra long scarf round and round and round Jolly's neck. We thought you were a box of treasure this morning, said Rabbit. Or just an empty box, said Duck. But we're very glad you weren't, said Little Bear. A new friend is much more fun than a whole but box full of treasure. Ah, oh, what a lovely story. All those teddy bears and cuddly toys. Had another cuddly toy arrive, Jolly the tall giraffe. And they all made friends in the end, didn't they? And helped him out of his big box. Well, thank you for watching, children. See you tomorrow.